afternoon. It's a beautiful day here at UMES. My name is Mfon Waboku, and I'm a doctoral candidate here at UMES. And I am so thrilled to be here with my esteemed panelists who would be sharing some really, really interesting stuff with us today. Um, I have here Dr. Bahovish Jones. Dr. Jones, if you could please introduce yourself and your team. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Gabriela Vlahovich Jones, and I'm a faculty member in the Department of English and Modern Languages. Joining me today are Ms. Sharon Brooks, Director of Library Services, Dr. Catherine Barrett Gain, Associate Professor in the Department of Social Sciences, and Dr. Linda Forrestal, Associate Professor in the Department of um, Hotel and Hospitality and Tourism and Management. Mm -hmm. Ms. Janet Eke, a reference librarian, is also an important part of our team. She's not here today due, uh, due to a family emergency, but she is responsible for much of the research that will be sharing with us uh, with you today. Yeah. Together, we are the UMES History Project, an interdisciplinary team dedicated to discovering unknown or little known stories from the past of our institution. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for being here. So I understand that today the project you're talking about is called A Week in Her Life at Princess Anne College. What is Princess Anne College? And that's to you, Dr. Katun. Good question. <laughs> what is Princess Anne College? The place that we know today that we're at now, we call University of Maryland Eastern Shore, has mm -hmm. had many names over the past hundred and, do the math, hundred and what years? Since 1870, how many, 136? Mm -hmm. So we've had many names. Sure. And one of them was Princess Anne College. And these names are not just for show, they mm -hmm. mean something. So we originally were the Delaware Conference Academy because we are basically a prep school for um, for a seminary, the, the Centenary, mm -hmm. Biblical, C Centenary Biblical Institute, in which became Morgan College okay. in Baltimore. And so it was basically kind of like a grade school, high school. Remember, mm -hmm. there was no public education for black people on the Eastern Shore for almost every year of American history. <laughs> so uh, people were starting from scratch. Right. So then, um, after 1890, the Second Moral Act was passed by the United States Go uh, Congress, and um, we, we gave funding for land-grant institutions, and we became the industrial branch of Morgan College, okay. um, and known around town as the Princess Anne Academy. Okay. So Princess Anne Academy was kind of like a nickname. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, Maryland Agricultural College, which is now the University of Maryland College Park, mm -hmm. uh, kind of used us as their segregated land-grant education school. So it was called the Eastern Shore Branch of the Maryland Agricultural College. You can imagine that would be a great cheer at the bat football game, huh? Yay, go <laughs> Eastern Shore Branch of the Maryland Agricultural. <laughs> Doesn't right. work. So that's why they called it Prince Anne Academy. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> it's like, you know what, you know, mm -hmm. we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And it was also basically a high school. Okay. Then college level work was added in 1927 and it became a junior college for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Still Prince Anne Academy. And that was what the last session was here at 10 Prince Anne Academy. Right. Now, though, a very exciting and horrifying event happened, and that was Donald Murray sued, this is Gabriella's story, mm -hmm. sued the University of Maryland College Park to get into the law school. Black, a black man, he, okay. a very educated black man. He wanted to, be, wanted to go to law school, mm -hmm. 1935. Well, Thurgood Marshall represented him. Mm -hmm. This became part of the Brown versus Board education eventually, but they won. Um, but the argument that Maryland Law School gave Mr. Murray in, him, in their rejection of him was, right. we have Princess Anne Academy for the black people. Okay. Now, Princess Anne Academy was a high school. Hmm. He wanted to go to law school. Right. <laughs> they said, go to Princess Anne Academy. What are right. they, what's he going to do, take OMEC? Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's when um, the University of Maryland College Park realized we're going to be in big trouble because right. black folks are going to want to come to College Park. We're mm -hmm. going to have to do something about that because they didn't want black folks at College Park. Let's be clear. Right. <laughs> they did not want black people at College Park. So they basically bought, they bought our school okay. from Morgan for $100,000. And Eric Yodelbauer claims that they never paid. <laughs> But anyway, um, so they bought Princess Anne Academy from Morgan and made it Princess Anne College. Okay. So we are Princess Anne. We were Princess Anne College, and we are for this for this panel mm -hmm. because of segregation. 
Right. Because the president of University of Maryland College Park said, we do not want black men in College Park where the white girls are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's literally what he said. I'm not making that up. Okay. So that's why we have Princeton College, to keep black people away from College Park. So it's not a great story. Um, but it is very interesting and it's very important. And we remained Princess Anne College until 1948, when it became Maryland State College. Right. And then until 1970, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. So for a lot of its time, it was called Princess Anne something. Okay. And right now, for our purposes today, we're in a week in the life of Princess Anne College, this period in the 1940s. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Kathleen. That was, that's so much interesting history right there. And I'm imagining that, you know, part of where you got all that, you know, lovely facts were from library archives. Um, Ms. Brooks, tell me a bit about library archives. I understand even this entire project for today, this, a week, you know, a, a life in, a week in her life at Princess Anne College is, was just definitely, generally birthed from, you know, exploring the archives. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about what um, library archives are. Okay, the, the Frederick Douglass Library Archives, it consists of various collections of photographs. We have numerous photographs uh, uh, depicting the campus, mm -hmm. campus life, uh, student activities. We also have uh, books. We have church records, Metropolitan United Methodist Church, mm -hmm. just a few blocks from here. Right. We have their church records also. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, documents, have special documents. We have... Uh, uh, clothing and yearbooks that would that that link together mm -hmm. and tell stories about the Eastern Shore, mm -hmm. local families, uh, the community, and the history of our campus. Mm, thank you. Tell me a little bit. You know, I just I'm, I'm trying to think. How did you start exploring? Uh, you know, archives. What, what's the story behind that? Okay, I started exploring archives because of the fact that. Uh, we get a lot of requests from, mm -hmm. from the community and plus on campus. Right. People want to know about the history of UMES, mm -hmm. 1886 up to today. Right. So we, we, uh, as we uh, go into the archives, we, we found out about the history of the institution, as Catherine just uh, mm -hmm. talked about. Uh, we, we looked at the year 1886. We looked at the founders. Mm -hmm. We looked at the people who were in leadership right. uh, in uh for our campus, so we so we have all of that information documented, right. and there are a lot of interesting documents because we have a lot of family histories. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of uh, families in on the Eastern Shore. They have they have names like Waters, uh, the Kyles. Right. It's, it's, there are quite a few names that right. will just kind of like ring a bell, ring a bell when right. you hear the name. Mm -hmm. And then we also have just recently we had students, we had student interns. Right. who came in and they documented a lot of the information that we have in the archives and they were just in, in awe wow. at what the school, what we had for right. special collections. All right, thank you so much for that. And, and, and Dr. Katrine, you know, and this project, I know, like I said, and, and she's already telling me how interesting the archives are mm -hmm. and that's where this all came from. And today you're talking about a week in her life with a focus on Davina Pinder. Can you tell me what you mean by a week in her life. You know, when I walk around this campus, it looks like a 2022 campus. It looks, but I always picture the people that walked here. When you look at these pictures mm -hmm. behind us, mm -hmm. they were here. Right. They were on this ground we mm -hmm. walk on. Their feet were where our feet are. Exactly. And I, I think about those people a lot. There were thousands of them, mm -hmm. and they were, and they walked. They walked around and they did things that were. Some things were very similar to what we do now, mm -hmm. um, like their Monday. Wednesday, Friday schedule and their Tuesday, Thursday schedule was the right. same as we use now. <laughs> but some things were very different. Right. And um, so we thought it would be fun um, because fun is really weird. important <laughs> part of our group. Like it's all, we, we really have fun doing this research. I know it sounds kind of weird, but that's really what our focus is on, <laughs> is fun. And um, we thought it'd be fun for everybody watching to kind of go through a week in the life of a student. Okay. Now, we also know who the students were because the catalogs that they used to publish every year had the students names in them right i mean can you imagine like you open up a college catalog mm -hmm. and every student is in it Good. there they were their names their hometowns and so we thought we could actually not have to make up a student we could just pick one right so we did okay so why did you choose you know this particular one davina pinder why, why, picked, why is she your focus well this is i'm so glad you <laughs> asked this because this is the craziest story ever Yes. 
we, I randomly picked Davinia Pinder from the list of sophomores in the 1942 catalog, randomly. I, I, I taught a student named Donnell Pinder, and I thought, the Pinders. Let's pick a Pinder. <laughs> okay. And she was from Cambridge. I wanted a student that was from as far away as possible. Most of the women students in the 1940s were Eastern Shore. They didn't come from far away. So I wanted somebody who at least had to travel a little bit to get home. Right. So I picked Davinia Pinder. Well, what do you know? We, uh, there she is. Look at this. She turns out she was an uh, incredible, not only student, she was an incredible alum. She was a faculty member. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was on the stage with Martin Luther King when he spoke here. Like, she was, like, amazing. And it was a random choice. But it was a great reminder that every student, female student especially, but every black college student on the Eastern Shore in the 1940s was an amazing human being and went on to do amazing things. You, you weren't just a slouch. To get yourself from wherever that family resources that you were getting from, mm -hmm. to get yourself organized enough and get your family organized enough to get you to college and to finish, right. you were no, we could have picked anybody and that person would have turned out to be a Davinia Pinder. Right. But, so I just want to point out that Davinia Pinder wasn't magical. They were all magical. <laughs> um, but Davinia Pinder was really something. And, and she just came at us, all these pictures of her. There she is as a faculty, and faculty member. And, and then and, and Miss Brooks knows a lot about, um, yeah, more I'll about her. But it's is amazing story. Right, thank you. Ms. Brooks, can you kind of tell us a little more about her? I've already, she's, Dr. Catherine has already mentioned a little bit, but I, I'm curious. I mean, I know everyone was fantastic, but we have this one life we're looking at. Tell yes. us a little more. Mm -hmm. Yes, she, um, uh, Ms. Pender, she was an amazing person. Uh, she earned her BS degree in home economics in, mm -hmm. in, in 1943 from Princess Anne mm -hmm. uh, College, and then she went on to further her education uh, she received a master's degree in 1946 wow. from Virginia State College, mm -hmm. and and she went even further because she wanted to. She she took further courses at Cornell University, mm -hmm. Iowa State, Drexel University, of Massa Massachusetts, wow. and Salisbury State now Salisbury University, mm -hmm. and her specialty was home economics and dietary and dietary science. Okay. Uh, she became a registered dietitian. And she was a member of many, many organizations. And she was also, she was also cited with a lot of awards and, and honors and accolades, too numerous to mention, but mm -hmm. a couple of those include like the Alumni Achievement Award and Faculty Member Emeritus. Now she served as the chairperson of Home Economics Department, which we know now is Human Ecology. Okay. It's called Human Ecology Department now. Okay. And so in 19, in, in 2011, uh, Ms. Pena was recognized uh, by the Human Ecology Department when it celebrated its 75th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I mm -hmm. feel like applauding, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. like me. Should. Like, she sounds like such an amazing mm -hmm. person. Yes. And I think it's really interesting and amazing that we're getting a chance to, you know, go back in time and catch a glimpse of what her life might have been like, especially as we're on the same campus where she was like so many years right. ago. So I do have another question for you, Ms. Brooks. Okay. Just, you know, and I know this was from the archives and you've done a lot of exploration, you and your team. Tell me, just based on, you know, what you have as available archival evidence, give me some kind of speculation of what her life would have been like on a Sunday. I know we're trying to look through her, you know, like a week of her, her life on campus. But mm -hmm. What would she have probably done on a Sunday? Well, um, first of all, uh, religion played a very important part mm -hmm. in the student's life on campus. Every student, I found out that every student was requested to bring a Bible mm -hmm. and a dictionary with them to campus. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was Sunday school every Sunday morning. There were church services uh, after that. Okay. And then they were also uh, re required to attend chapel services, okay. and then twice a month, they had to attend Vesper or either prayer services. Hmm. Uh, then in the afternoon, after all of this was over with, I, w I was trying to imagine that she would probably get together with some of her friends, mm -hmm. go to the campus dining hall for mm -hmm. Sunday dinner, right. and then after that, they would probably 
socialize whatever was permitted on the campus on a Sunday mm -hmm. during during that time right. because the campus did have strict rules. And then after then after that, then uh, I would say that she would probably prepare herself for Monday mm -hmm. classes, just study and then prepare for Monday morning classes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm already like painting this story in my head, like, you know, walking, almost like visualizing her. So I've seen her on Sunday and, and I'm thinking, okay, and you've, you've said, okay, she's probably prepping for classes on Monday. Yes. So I'm thinking what's happening the rest of the week. Dr. Jones, Monday to Friday, she probably was in classes. Can you tell me, you know, what kind of, what would, what, what might her, her weekly course load have been like? And I think this was mentioned be before, but if you could tell us a little more, what was her major? What was her course of study? Sure. So first of all, I'd like to repeat what um, Dr. Catherine said, that we are following Devenia Pinder during the academic year 1941 mm -hmm. and 1942. Mm -hmm. Specifically, we're following, following her during the fall semester. Okay. So what we know about Devenia's course of study comes from the course catalog 1941-1942. Okay. The course catalog is uh, a very valuable source of information mm -hmm. because it includes not only information about courses, but also information about the students and the faculty members. Right. So um, <coughs> based on what we know from the catalog, we can reasonably speculate that during fall um, 1941, mm -hmm. Devenia would probably have taken the following courses. Right. Argumentation and debate, principles of economics, foods, uh, general physics, and general bacteriology. So you probably ask, okay, how exactly do we know that? Right. I have to say that I really don't know that these are exactly the courses that she took, mm -hmm. but this is an informed speculation based right. on what we know from the course catalog. Okay. So um, at that time, as um, Dr. Catherine mentioned, we um, um, Princess Anne College had two divisions. It had a lower division, right. which was called also the junior college, and mm -hmm. an upper division. Okay. So there's a required curriculum for the lower division, almost like general education, but right. it also included a number of specialized courses right. for those who wanted to go into the upper division mm -hmm. and earn a bachelor's degree. Right. So Princess Anne College offered three bachelor degrees. Okay. So we had um, uh, in um, 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 agriculture, Mm -hmm. uh, home economics, mm -hmm. and mechanic arts. Okay. So students who um, wanted to pursue a bachelor's degree mm -hmm. had to complete lower division courses and then meet some prerequisites to move on to the upper division. Right. If a student wanted to get a bachelor's, let's say, in English or music or whatever, they had mm -hmm. to move somewhere else. Okay. So the only degrees that were available at mm -hmm. Princess Anne College were th these three. And we know that Devenia Pinder was a home economics major. Right. Uh, we know from later in life, but we also know that, that she graduated with a home economics degree mm -hmm. because she is listed as a graduate in the 1944-1945 catalog. Okay. So the catalog lists not only the students, but also the, the graduates. graduates. Okay. So just to figure out what, how do we exactly right. know so her course of study. Like so the sophomore, we have curriculum listed for each mm -hmm. year. So the sophomore year included four required courses out right. of which two were, uh, were required for the fall. Right. Argumentation and debate and mm -hmm. principles of economics. Right. Okay, these are the required courses. And then students had to select a number of courses from a list to meet the requirements for the junior college. Mm -hmm. So out of those selections, three were required for the junior college for right. home economics majors, and mm -hmm. these were foods, uh, general physics, and general bacteriology. Okay. So I'm um, speculating that this, these would, this would have been her course load right. during the fall semester. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for that. Like really, really interesting. I, I, mm -hmm. This is what's so funny. History is always so interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about <laughs> academics and courses, and uh, and I'm there like already like yeah, almost like I'm watching TV. So, but I'm, I'm you know I just want to you know <laughs> I, I love it. That's exactly oh, what you know, really part of me. I know we're talking about <laughs> academics, but like I said, in my mind, I'm already painting these pictures. So, Dr. Catherine, if I may ask you, if we can just leave the classroom for a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what the living arrangements would have been like. Where did she stay? You know. Well, what, what I noticed kind of that already on the screen we've shown <laughs> right. her dorm. So we can go back a little bit. Yeah, can we, go we back can go back bit? to that Delcon Hall. And that's a very interesting dormitory. We know she stayed there because she was a woman. Eliza okay. Smith. I'm oh, sorry. Well, 
I think it was used. But anyway, yeah, the Eliza Smith Hall. Did you guys? Yeah, so there it is. Eliza Smith Hall, Delcon Hall was the men's. I think they were attached or next to each other. But Eliza Smith was a women's dormitory, and it's kind of cool because mm -hmm. Eliza Smith was a girl who had d been deceased, died somehow, and her parents gave money to Princeton Anne College for some reason to build, because right. they were from Massachusetts, they weren't mm -hmm. related. Eliza right. Smith was white, mm -hmm. um, the whole family was, but uh, they called it Eliza Smith Hall, but that Smith family was the Smith and Wesson family, right. the gun family. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a cool history. That um, that building, uh, if, you, if you go to our current campus and go inside of the oval behind mm -hmm. JT Williams, that's where Eliza Smith Hall was, in the grass that we now know inside that where nothing is. That's where the whole campus used to be. Mm -hmm. So she lived there, and we know a couple things about her life there. We know that there were 50, um, you, you, there's a description of it on that thing, but there's, there were 50 rooms for girls. Um, there was a room for the matron or the teacher. Uh, there were bathrooms, there was um, hot water and cold water. Mm -hmm. uh, there was electricity. Um, so it, you know, it, was a, it was a comfortable place. I mean, you can see it's three floors, obviously no elevator. Yeah. Um, and w it, it lasted on this uh, campus for a while, and it eventually was burned. I think it was a purposeful control burn to get rid of, you know, to, that's how they used to get rid of buildings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but that's where she lived. And um, so I think, did you say that, did you want to know sort of what, what, what she, she, yeah, like I know what you told she, us about what, what, where she lives, like what would they do, what kind of course would they yeah, have? Yeah, you know how now, I guess, and my, when I lived at college, we had they had housekeeping staff, okay. and I guess they had housekeeping. We don't. There's a lot of things, as Dr. Jones said, we don't know everything. Right. We're still learning, mm -hmm. um, but we do know that the girls did their own laundry. Mm -hmm. We do know the boys did not. So who did the laundry? We don't know who did the boys' laundry, <laughs> but we know they didn't. Okay. So she did her own laundry, and turns out the laundry they was the laundry was in the dining hall on the first floor, the dining, they ate on the second floor, the dining hall on the first floor had laundry and they had washing machines and spindles, you know, those mm -hmm. wranglers mm -hmm. that, you know, squeeze out the water. And they had hot and, hot and cold water. So the girls did their own laundry there. And I don't know we, how the boys got their laundry they have done. lines? I don't know, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, that they would, they, we didn't have dryers, so I'm assuming there were clotheslines somewhere. So again, it's exciting because there's so many things yeah. we have yet to find out. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see that some of the ways we find things out is sort of running across stuff in weird places. Right. Like it, uh, you're gonna, uh, we're you're gonna see. talk about the college <laughs> mirror where the newspaper, where they, where they reveal little yeah. things. You're like, wait, did, what did she say on that? You know, like little mm -hmm. things like that where you give us this color that we can't get from the catalogs, we can't get from the official sources, mm -hmm. but you can kind of get from the it's kids when they write stuff stuff. Yeah. stuff down. So there's things that we know, um, but that's where she would have lived, and that's where she, but that's not where she did her laundry. And <coughs> the reason why I'm focusing on laundry is because the campus wasn't, um, the walkways weren't paved. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you've ever lived in a place that's not paved, mm -hmm. but it, we take it for granted in America. <laughs> but it's very dusty. Right. Um, literally dusty mm -hmm. and muddy, right. and everybody who, who goes to school here now kn already knows that it's muddy in the, in the when it rains here right. already. Right. Now imagine if there was no pavement. So you can imagine how tricky that was for shoes, keeping shoes clean, keeping clothes clean, right. and I don't know how the boys, who they got to do their laundry, but she was certainly scrubbing her own clothes. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that. And Dr. Jones, um, I, I, I'm sorry, so I, I'm coming back. Yes, it, that was just me taking a little trip, you know, side trip. <laughs> Tell us a little more, more about her academic life. What other courses could she have, would she, might she have taken besides what you've already told us about? Yes, so um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the, the a little mm -hmm. bit of detail about right. some of the courses that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say one or two today, what could she have taken? I don't know exactly, but right. one course that probably would have met maybe every day of the week mm -hmm. was foods. Uh, home, home economics three. So first of all, I'd like to mention something really interesting. The right. way they numbered the courses, mm -hmm. they indicated whether the, there was that course met in the fall or in the spring. Right. So the um, the even num the sorry the odd numbers were for the fall, and the even numbers were for the spring. Okay. So if it was a three, that would have met in the fall. Okay. So foods uh, foods was home economics three, and um, let me tell you what um, they had a picture of that picture of them serving. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to it just yeah. a sec. So I just want to read you the. I want. I de yes. Yeah, Can you keep it there just a little mm -hmm. bit? So, so the the catalog description says it's one recitation and two two-hour laboratories. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And um, it's defined as study of food selections and composition with special emphasis on uh, nutritive values, food requirements, scientific principles of cookery applied to the preparation of food. So you, you notice the word recitation, mm -hmm. and other courses are labeled as lectures. So mm -hmm. what is the difference between recitation and lecture? Mm -hmm. Well, apparently recitation was a smaller class, okay. like hands-on work. Mm, okay. okay, and apparently the, the laboratories, like the two-hour laboratories, mm. counted for one credit. Uh, so, okay. so what, like, two, one recitation and two two-hour laboratories would have been three credits. Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And students actually showed off their skills uh, by putting up dinners at during at the practice house. And we had we had that picture with students. Um, um, students around that was it's a picture from the course catalog students uh, yes yes Serving. that's it yeah. okay so mm -hmm. the <coughs> picture from inside the practice house where students showed off their culinary skills and table setting skills and Catherine can you tell right. us a little bit about the practice house <laughs> okay I was just gonna ask what, what is a practice All right, house? everybody get ready because everything you've ever thought about life is about to change mm -hmm. this practice house it, okay this was actually the the president's home the principal's home remember at this time our leader was a president for the first time we had a president because of a college. Before that, it was always a principal because it's basically a high school. High school right. So this was the principal's house. And Grigsby would be the principal at mm -hmm. this time. He didn't live there. I think he lived in town or he lived somewhere else. So that was not an, occupied by our, our, our leader. The second floor of that house that you saw there was the practice house for the home economics majors mm -hmm. and the home economics program. Now, the home, now, one other thing we haven't sort of mentioned, and maybe we are, is that all girls were home economics majors. Okay. Yes. They were either home economics or home economics education. Okay. The boys were not home econ economics majors, and the girls were not agriculture and industrial majors. And I'm not—I don't think they weren't allowed. It wasn't that they, it wasn't about. It was just the way it, the it way was. they the way it was. Mm -hmm. But so they would, um, especially I think in the later with the sophomore and the, what we would call junior and seniors, they would run the practice house. They would, um, they would run a home. Okay. It's home economics. They would. Outfit it, take care of it, maintain it, learn it, learn how to use it, learn how to run it, and and now <laughs> I have to tell you something that everyone's head exploded when we <laughs> learned this. We learned not from the official sources, but from the newspaper, the college newspaper, the College Mirror. Mm -hmm. We learned about the practice baby. <laughs> Do you now, mean like an actual baby? An actual baby, Mfan. Let me just give you a second to take <laughs> okay, that in. Cool. Everybody just take a second. We learned it from this newspaper. So there's a student newspaper that was very brief, just brief for a couple of issues. It was supposed to be, I think this one right here is the second issue. It was supposed to last, it didn't last. But in this issue, we learned so much. Right. There's some cool gossip. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on, a lot of hooking up happening in the mm -hmm. 1942. I mean, they're running around. All, there's a lot going on in this campus, and they're telling it all in the uh, codes in the back pages of the College Mirror. There's a lot of sports going on, basketball, um, football. There's girls' and boys' sports. And there's reference to the practice baby. And we were all like, what? This, there was a real-life baby who lived in the practice house on campus for a year being taken care of by the home economics majors 24 hours a day. And during Christmas, he went home with them, like <laughs> we used to take the hamster home in fifth grade. And he would entertain at Christmas parties. The, cra the practice baby, and I know this is crazy. I know, I know everyone's heads must be, because I mean, it was like my whole mind just spun when I heard this. Everything I knew about life changed. Well, I right. want to know whose baby it was. Uh, well, just, okay. Like, whose baby? Now, it, this is not a UMES thing. It wasn't a Princeton College invention. Janet, our crack researcher who's not here today, she read a book called The Hidden History of Home Economics. Okay. <laughs> and Cornell had a practice baby for decades. Not the same baby. Obviously, a different baby every year. Right. Um, University of Maryland College Park had a practice baby. So this practice baby thing was normal. And, what it, um, and we had one. And, and, and this year, in 1942, when... Davinia Pinder would have taken care of him. Right. His name was Prince Leroy. That was his name. And he lived here for a year. And then what, what it turns out is that this is obviously one of these cases where some things do change. Mm -hmm. You know, life may be a lot of the same now as it is 1942 in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Our schedules, our clothes. But let me tell you something. We're not having practice babies anymore. Right. Because that would be clearly illegal. And in, an ethical and more, you know everything else, right? But uh, so it turns out that that in those days people didn't want babies to adopt. 
they wanted kids that could do something. Okay. So babies would languish in infant homes. Okay. And so mm -hmm. colleges like Prince Van College would go to the local welfare society or, and say, can we take a baby for a year? That's sure. <laughs> and they take a baby and then bring him back in a year and then he would be adopted. Now, they didn't keep the name. He didn't keep the name Prince Leroy. So wherever he ended up, he probably never knew he was a practice baby. Mm -hmm. He probably has no notion of that. He got another name one, upon adoption. And in fact, some schools named the practice baby for their location on campus. Um, uh, I think it was either Cornell or College Park. They, one baby was called North and one baby was called South. So Kim Kardashian wasn't the first one to name a baby North. <laughs> wow. So, um, so they, anyway, this, there was a thing. So we had a practice baby, Prince Leroy, hmm. and we only know about this one practice baby. We can only assume we had a number of practice babies mm -hmm. uh, because it seemed, from the way he appeared in the college paper, he wasn't unusual. Right. It wasn't like, oh my God, there's a, there's a practice baby. Practice baby it was yeah. this year's practice baby. So apparently mm -hmm. it was a normal thing. We just don't have any evidence, and that's something we want to, we've looked at further. But... We also know from the college mayor that he was very well taken care of. He grew fat and happy. He was he had 13 mothers. Um, you can imagine how much <laughs> doting he got and right. love and kisses and everything else. I mean, he was he probably had the greatest year of his life. <laughs> I um, hope so. So you know, this is, wasn't some kind of cruel joke. Um, college girls would never let a, a baby uh, suffer, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, um, so he lived there. But anyway, so <sighs> we had a practice baby. Um, so that was going on, hmm. and as well as everything else about a home. Now, you know, you think about it, and we, we sometimes, and I don't know why we do, but for a while there we got a little down on the home ec major. But you have to think about um, how important the science of running lives and running a family is. Right. And it's no joke. It's not mm -hmm. about tidying up and putting out flowers. Mm -hmm. You're in charge of people's lives. True. keeping them alive. Mm -hmm. The reason you're here, the reason I'm here is because our mothers kept and our fathers kept us alive. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And mm -hmm. so that, you know, it's nutrition, mm -hmm. knowing about bacteria, knowing about, it's a science. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's just really important to take it seriously. And they did very, very seriously. Obviously. Wow. That was a, <laughs> that was a lot. Like, yeah, that was a lot. It's but a like lot. you said, I, I can see that education even back then was pretty, pretty serious. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, and, and I know this is almost like me just going down, but I'm curious. So, so she, 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 was like, she had this practice house. She's learning about bacteria. Did she do anything related to English, perhaps? Yes, as we mentioned, she had um, a required English course, and okay. it was English 3, Argumentation and Debate. Mm -hmm. And because the course catalog lists all the instructors, we know who the professor was. Okay. His name was Mr. William Allen Hill, Professor of English and Dramatics. He had a Bachelor's of Arts from um, Lincoln University and a Bachelor of Music from New England Conservatory of Music. And he had also studied in Berlin, Germany. Mm -hmm. And we know that he was her teacher because he was the only English teacher. English teacher. Princess 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 so he would have taught okay. all the English courses. Okay. Uh, that that's, that's not, that's mm -hmm. Mr. Grigby. No, that's that's, that's Mr. Grigby, the principal. That's, yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a principal. That is not the um, English teacher. Right. So he was the only English teacher at Princess Anne College. Okay. Okay. Um, Dr. Fetterin, did she do anything for like extracurricular? Yes. Uh, and this is one of those miracles that we picked this, mm -hmm. this lady and then she keep, her name kept coming at us. We're like, she did that too. I want to point out too, just what Dr. Jones was saying that um, most of the, almost all of the faculty of Prison College did not have a PhD that wasn't normal or necessary. Okay. They had, a lot of them, three-fourths had master's degrees. Okay. Um, I think there was only one PhD uh, around, but um, so there was really normal to be a, not a doctor, but to be a Mr. or a Miss yeah. or Mrs. Um, so yes, she, one thing we know she did was Davinia. She worked on the college newspaper, <laughs> and we couldn't okay. believe it. We were like, every source we saw had her name in it. We were like, why is this? This woman is just coming at us over and over. We were just, right. we just think, we just thought it was amazing. Every time somebody sent us something, something we were like. Was, oh. Her? She did it again? <laughs> so it turns out in that issue that you saw the college mm -hmm. mirror in, in on your screen, she was in the in the flag in the staff as as the, the uh, book reviewer. Okay. So she was the book reviewer of the college mirror and we couldn't believe it for like Davinia was in everything. So the now, you know, remember this is pre internet, pre computer, pre typewriter, pre all that stuff. So right. 
when you put together a newspaper, you have to type set, the type you have to set, type yeah. things, mm -hmm, you have to mm -hmm. write, you know, there's a lot of work, like right. manual labor. Right. Um, so she would have gone to meetings for that. They mm -hmm. would have, um, there it is, there's the College Mirror. And if you look, there's a couple pages of it and her name is there as book reviewer. Mm -hmm. So she, we know she was a reader. We know right. she enjoyed books. And um, she wrote there in that in that issue is a review of a book that she wrote. Okay. And um, so that book ha that 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 her her job as a book reviewer was part of a staff, and they would they covered sports, they covered uh, news, mm -hmm. they covered um, they 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 covered the the they talked about the fact that the world was beginning to go back to war. Mm -hmm. Remember, right. um, they talked about. Uh, world events. They talked about local events. They talked about farmers. A lot of stuff about farmers. A lot, you know, it's very mm -hmm. farm community. Right. So it was a. It was kind of a. It's kind of a view into the region and into the world from this. From this. From our campus. So, I liked because I teach world history. I like to point out that you know Princess Anne was not separate from the world. Right. It's very involved, and you can see it even in this college mirror. And what's really I was, what I was kind of bummed out about is the fact that in 1942 they had a college newspaper. Mm -hmm. And we don't. Mm. So Good maybe point. that's something that needs to be fixed. After 1942, this, you know. when it was hard mm -hmm. to have one, and so we really should. I think so too. Like I mean, look at all the interesting stuff. I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, 40 years, 50 years, 100 years from now, you know, how they're gonna find out what hap what has happened in well, our time if we didn't write it down? So well, that might gonna, be something. They're gonna look at everybody's Instagram. <laughs> 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 probably, <laughs> probably. And, and I know we're still like looking at Monday through Friday. Um, Dr. Jones, do you have any other courses that the Vina might have taken uh, yes, besides like what you've talked about already? Yes, I'd like to tell you a little bit about um, the bacteriology course. Okay. So uh, that would have been another course that sh would have been required for the junior college. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the bacteriology course focused on the study of bacteria and bacteria, yeast, and molds, according okay. to the course catalog, in relationship to community health. Okay. And what's really important to keep in mind is that the professors of biological sciences at Princess Anne College were women. Um, so that's, that's really interesting. Uh, the course catalog lists Ms. Grace Wilkinson mm -hmm. as a professor, assistant professor of biological sciences. She is listed as being on leave during the 1941-1942, mm -hmm. but her replacement was also a woman. Both of them were graduates of Howard College. Her replacement was Ms. Evelyn Johnson. Okay. So it's really interesting to know that although all women study home economics, the science or science professors who are We're actually women. women. Mm -hmm. And that would be Howard College of currently Howard University. That's okay. the graduates that they were of. Miss mm -hmm. right. um, Brooks, do you know, do we know anything from the archives or from, you know, about the school's administration at that time? Yes, we do. During, the, um, during that time, the, the administration was led by um, Robert Alexander Grigsby, mm -hmm. who came to Princess Anne in 1913, and he assumed leadership for the campus from 1936 to 1947. This was after the death of Thomas Kaya. Now, when he, uh, during his leadership, um, according to the camp, uh, college um, catalog, there were 16 officers of instruction, just 16. Okay. But then out of those 16, four of those were through home economics. Mm -hmm. So when, as Divinia was uh, enrolled in, the, in school, this is where she um, uh, was able to uh, take her classes. Her classes were located in the administration building. Mm -hmm. okay. The home economics department was located in the administration building on the second floor. That's what we now know as is T Williams? It doesn't look like Williams. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It looks, it's another building. Okay. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't look like Williams. Okay. Okay. And she attended classes in, in the food laboratory. They had a food laboratory. Mm -hmm. They had a clothing laboratory. And they had a designing laboratory mm -hmm. during that time. That's good. Uh, and plus the fact other classes and faculty offices were located in the administration building too. Now, if, as I said, when she came, um, Mr. Grigsby was the president at that time, and this was during a time under his administration, the campus was going through a lot of challenges. Okay. Um, under his administration, there was a fire 
Mm -hmm. It happened on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the campus was just uh, not given a good report. People didn't think that the campus should even have existed, existed right. but he persevered mm -hmm. along with others to make sure that you know mm -hmm. we, we were still I'm here. glad he did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. And I know we're focused a lot on her academics, and that's basically, I'm assuming, what she would have done you know, Monday through Friday. But um, Dr. Katrin, I'm sure she wasn't doing only just schoolwork. Can and you laundry. Just and laundry. And laundry, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, taking care of the practice baby the and baby. all that good stuff. <laughs> Prince Leroy. What did she do for fun? You know, we, what do you think she did before? You know, we, it's important to think about the world they lived in. They mm -hmm. were in a segregated world, hostile to them. Mm -hmm. They were going to get a college education and go out into a hostile job market. They were facing a war. Life mm -hmm. wasn't easy. They were coming from sharecropping families. They were coming right. from, it was, it was not easy. Um, but the college mirror shows that they were having a lot of fun. Anyway, right, I mean, just like people do, you know, even in the worst of times, people find. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of I'd, hooking up going on. <laughs> According to the College Mirror, there's just item after item written about so and so with so and so in the practice house, so and so with so and so in the, you know, like, mm -hmm. okay. And then always code names. They were always using code um, that they would know. Right. Um, it was kind of like a little Instagram. It was like a little, you know. Um, but one of the things also, um, I'm not sure, do we have that little clip of the jitterbug? No, no. Okay, so if you just Google it right now to just look at the jitterbug. We wanted to show you because that's the dance that okay. they would have been doing, right, the jitterbug. So if you just Google it right now, just to hit video and just look at it. And one of the reasons we wanted to show you the jitterbug is because it was very fast. Energetic. Yeah, and, and it's, it's important to think about that because sometimes we think about the 1940s as everybody was kind of slow. slow we right. think about the past as everybody moving slow. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. No, the jitterbug was super, super fast and super athletic and super amazing to see. You, Flipping you, it, people over their shoulders. It kind of looks like it, the, the, the video is on fast okay. motion, okay. but it's not. They're really going that fast. <laughs> and so they would have been doing that, you know, on Friday evening in Kaya Gym. Now, um... We have a Kaya Hall currently, right. but that's mm -hmm. not Kaya Gym. Kaya Hall used to be, see, that's Kaya Gym. Thank you. This is perfect. Now, that is currently the parking lot between Hazel and J.T. Williams, so, mm -hmm. so the, where the president parks her car um, is where that gym was. And that's a very important building on campus. That would have been where graduations were. That would have been where Martin Luther King spoke, Thurgood Marshall spoke, my, you know, all the, uh, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. So they would have spoken in that building, which is now a parking lot. But that was Kaya Gymnasium, named for, as Ms. Brooks said, the, the leader who had just passed away right. um, before Mr. Mm -hmm. Grigsby. So that's where the jitterbugging would have gone on. And um, so when you pass by that parking lot, and you're, and you're on your way up from campus toward J.T. Williams, passing Hazel, and you see that tree in that parking lot, just think of all the action that went on in there. <laughs> so that's where the action was. Right, I can imagine. Uh, Dr. Floristow, thank you um, for being here today. Now, can you tell us what travel will have been like for Davinia? I, I, I know she had to leave campus at some point, so how did that happen? Well, um, as Catherine said, she's from Cambridge, and I've been trying to find out how she would have got here other than private car. Mm -hmm. um, there were maybe some buses, but I still don't have the definitive answer on that. Right. However, we know here on UMES, there is a railroad that goes right through campus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you have noticed it. Sometimes students go, what? Is there one there? Um, but that's how people got around, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, there was this passenger train called the Delaware Road. And if there's a, I think there's a picture of the map. Um, students would come from Norfolk, uh, take a ferry to Cape Charles, get on this train um, that brought them directly to Princess Anne. Okay. This train, the next stop was Salisbury. Hmm. Uh, here's a part of the schedule. There were seven trains going north, seven trains going south every day. Okay. And we sus I, I, I suspect that um, students would go shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, on this train called the, Del the Delaware Road, which was a railroad. It was built in 1859, and it opened up southern um, Delaware to the outside world. Ran up and down. If there's a picture, you have a picture of the train track. It kind of shows, i um, not sure if you have that, but it's kind of up the spine of the Delmarva, mm -hmm. links up and goes up into Philadelphia at, at Wilmington. Mm -hmm. But what about uh, our student? 
uh, back to the college mirror, we have this. <laughs> oh, do we might have also have a picture of this train station in Princess Anne? Do you have that? There is a train station picture. I, uh, anyway, in the college mirror, the student newspaper, there lists a bunch of stores. There, there we go. Uh, that's that's, Salis that's, that's Salisbury, yeah. and mm -hmm. there's also one of, so this may be where she got off if she went to the stores. Okay. In the College Mirror, the student-run newspaper, there were ads. Okay. And from that archival material, we know what stores, uh, they were welcoming, welcoming African-American students from Princess Anne to go shop. Mm -hmm. Shoe stores, beauty parlors, laundries, furniture stores, restaurants, theaters, and tea rooms up in Salisbury. Oh. Uh, and so I just, I conjecture they right. might have gotten on the train of Princess Anne uh, that's next <laughs> and taken one stop mm -hmm. to go to Salisbury right um, now that would have put them both of the the Salisbury train station is n kind of north of 50 that would have been maybe a little hike okay I'll uh, get back to the store so they might have in in, in um, taken the services of this gentleman that advertised in the college mirror cooks cabby cab service Okay. It's an African-American man, as I understand it, uh, Salisbury-based cab service. He, mm -hmm. uh, he's quoted here as saying he's available 24 hours, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, and he offered uh, student... Look at the phone number. Oh, yeah. Uh, the three phone digits. number is 355. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> right. I tried to figure out exactly where Lake and Main Streets is. I'm not sure where that is. But he also had some little giveaways. Uh, I think I have a picture of a Cook's Cab Service ruler. It was a Christmas giveaway. Okay. Cool. That's really cool. That, you know, that's called branding and uh, marketing, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he gave that maybe to students when they got out of the cab. And then another branding marketing tool of uh, Mr. Cook was a coin. Uh, which was a token worth uh, was a, worth a 25 cent cab fare, hmm. and he would also give that to the students. Okay. Uh, I I just want to say for, through all my research on transportation, I learned that it was easier to get to Princess Anne by public transportation in the 1930s and 40s than it is today. <laughs> you need to have a car, right? But you didn't used to. And you didn't used to. I mean, right. students that don't have a car today, it's uh, and you it's can still hard. go over to the Princess Anne. Um, train station. It's still there. Okay. Yeah, it's there. It's, you know, it's a little hidden, but you, you can ask people in the neighborhood and they'll point mm -hmm. you the right way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but the problem was the end of the passenger trains uh, with the opening of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel and the, you know, down to Norfolk mm -hmm. and also the, the, the bridge to Annapolis. Mm -hmm. Then passenger service ended on the, Delmar, the Delaware Road in 19, I think 1964. Right. So quickly after the opening of those two big, massive bridges. Wow. Yes. And you mentioned something really important, too, about mm -hmm. their options for fun in mm -hmm. the neighborhood. There right. were not many. Salisbury would have been a more welcoming place for mm -hmm. our students. Mm -hmm. okay. Our students didn't seem to be, from what we read in the College Mirror, very, very welcome in the Princess Anne establishments. Okay. Princess Anne, we only saw there was one little grill, one theater that was advertising in the College Mirror. Mm -hmm. All the other businesses were in Salisbury. Yeah, there is an African-American community um, still in Salisbury um, and closer probably to the train station. So okay. that may have been the, the pull for going there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, every one of you. I, I know that I have learned so much and I'm curious. I want to learn even more. I mean, guys, you guys heard all of that about Davinia Pinder, and I'm sure there are more Davina Pinders that awesome. we can find. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us, is there anything else you'd want to share with us? How can we find more information? How can we get involved in you know, the library? How can we do this, the same kind of thing, the exploration you've done in the archives? That's I don't think I mentioned show. this, mm -hmm. but um, Ms. Pinder uh, taught at UMES for 20 years. Whoa. She retired in 1978. What'd she teach? Um, Home economics. Home economics for 20 years at UMES. Mm -hmm. She's chair of the department? Yes. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. I think we picked a good one. We Well, I mean, <laughs> I do believe if we picked any of them, they would have been amazing. But yeah, she we were really startled at all the stuff we learned about her. And there are so many more to learn about. And so our project continues, and the archives are there and getting more and more organized in our library. Come use them. Come look at them. Come ask Ms. Brooks and Ms. Ecke mm -hmm. about them. Do research papers. Mm -hmm. Pick when you when when you get assigned a research paper in any of your departments. 
choose a UMES history project or UMES science, pro whatever. We have everything. So we have a lot of stuff on this campus we have yet to learn. Great. Thank you so much. And so again, if you have more questions after now, you want to see, you know, learn more about Davinia Pinda or anything about the UMES history project, you can always contact Dr. Vahov Jones and her email address is gvjones, J-O-N-E-S, at umes.edu. And this is me rounding off. Again, I'm Mufon Waboku. It's been a pleasure to be here. And thank you again, guys, for being here. Bye. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Bye.